Do you feel overwhelmed with your financial responsibilities and debt? Perhaps you're exhausted from turning your wheels and you feel like you're not really getting anywhere. So if you're ready for financial abundance, to experience that life that you've been dreaming of forever, then this episode is for you. Welcome to the Coffee and Confidence Show, episode 27. 27, guys. And today's episode is all about confidently creating wealth in your life. So welcome, my name is Kelly Kerrigan. I'm the host of the show. I am an assertiveness coach and my business is Empower Me Coaching. I'm helping people pleasers worldwide confidently communicate with others. So what is a people pleaser? Maybe you're not quite sure what this term means. Well, let me share with you what a people pleaser is. So a people pleaser is a selfless giver. They are kind, they do many things for other people, they put others' needs before their own to a point where they where they have lost themselves, where they perhaps feel resentments towards others who are out there doing the things they love and getting the results that they want. Typically, people pleasers are living their life in the passenger seat. Imagine, somebody else is driving your life. So I'm helping people pleasers take back their voice, confidently communicate with others so they can feel valued and heard and live the life that they've um, always dreamed of. So that's just a little bit about me. So without further ado, I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Jillian Slegger. She's a self-published author. She's a healer. She's a wellness coach. And she has a passion for empowering spiritpreneurs. And today she's going to share her knowledge to you on how you can confidently create wealth so you don't have to feel stuck anymore. So grab your coffee, grab your pen, grab your paper, you know, shut off the distractions and tune in to today's very powerful show. So welcome, Jillian. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, I'm excited to have you as well, because on these shows, not only do my guests and the viewers get to learn, but guess what? I also get to learn. So I've got my pen and paper handy. So please share a little bit more about yourself. All right. Well, again, my name is Jillian Schleger. I live in Bevel, Ontario, Canada, where it is really, really super cold today. And I live here with uh, my fur babies. And I am a healer, author, coach, and I teach people that I interact with, my students and my clients, and anyone else who will listen, about muscle testing, applied kinesiology, and healing modalities to tap into their body, mind, and spirit, mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of where there is that stuck energy, those blocks, the resistance, when we are working towards our goals. And um, I've come up with a system that I call kinetic divination. And I wrote a book on that process of healing and tapping into the body, mind, and spirit. And I, I share this with people who want to learn how to move past those limitations and restrictions and attain wealth and abundance in their lives. Mm, that sounds amazing. So I'm excited for you to share today about all of, you know, anyway, I'm just really excited for you guys to, sh to hear what Jillian has to say. And before we uh, move on to that, this is the Coffee and Confidence Show. So we're going to take just a minute and talk about what is in your cup. So today in my cup, I've got water. I know, don't be disappointed, okay? I've already had my coffee. <laughs> I'm feeling a little dehydrated. So yeah, it's, it's water time for this girl. Um, I, I guess I haven't been drinking enough water lately and my body is telling me no coffee, drink more water. So I did have a coffee this morning, but that's what's in my cup. Jillian, what's in your cup this morning? This, uh, I have tea this morning and usually that's what I drink. Um, I'm a, in Ayurveda, I'm a Pitta. So Pitta body type or constitution does like the, the warm, sweet liquid. But the mug I wanted to talk about too, because that is from Nova Scotia. Ah. Mm -hmm. So what's so the story the behind I, the mug? So I'm adopted. My biological family lives in, uh, most of them, lives in Nova Scotia. 
And the second time I went to visit them, I went uh, on the hunt. Every time I go touring, exploring, traveling, I buy a ceramic mug. So this was from the second time that I met my biological family. It's one of my favorite mugs. I'm, I'm a water sign, so I love this color of bluey green. And uh, it's just holds special meaning for me because of where it's from. And it's, it was handmade from a market that I went to in Nova Scotia. And yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, for any of the viewers online, I'd love to hear when you guys travel, is there something specific that you pick up to commemorate your travels? Which is interesting. I'll just take a minute to share uh, something that I like to buy when I'm traveling to different places is a Christmas decoration. So, you know, we have a Christmas decoration from BAM, from, uh, you know, being out there in the mountains. We have uh, from New Orleans, we have like a masquerade mask. I mean, so many different things. And that's what I like to pick up. Uh, when I'm traveling to uh, remember our trip. So any of you viewers, please share if there's something special that you purchase on your travels to remember those special memories. Love to hear from you. Great idea, I love that Christmas ornament. Yeah, yeah, they take up less space and you get to, you know, re I create, you know, recreate those memories like as we're decorating the tree. So that's, that's yeah, great. That's beautiful. Yeah. So I want to welcome everybody who is watching live. Please say hello. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, also, if you're catching the replay, hashtag replay. Again, let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to connect and, uh, you know, to see where everybody's tuning in from. All right. So this whole confidently creating wealth, I'm like, ooh, let's get into this, right? Yes. Um, you know, new year. I know many people out there have some big goals, big changes. And this is a piece of the puzzle, right? Um, yes. And there are people who struggle in this department with finances, with wealth. Now, is our life meant to be difficult when it comes to wealth? Well, that's a good question. So what I often ask my clients and my students is, if you think of the universe, if you think of God, if you think of nature, and if you think of how abundant nature seems to be, looks to be, or is, when you think about that, do you think that nature, the universe, and God is abundant? Or are they abundant? And to me, they totally are. Uh, I look around at, at nature and I see abundance everywhere I look. So of course we are a part of that. We are the stuff that's, that's, that's made of from the stars, right? Where it's made of the same material. And we are, we're supposed to be abundant. And that's when I say wealth, that's what I mean is abundance. And that's we can talk a little bit about the emotional attachment to words. If some people don't really um, vibrate well with the word wealth or money or riches, so you can substitute that with abundance and that might feel better for you while mm -hmm. you're working on those stories of wealth, riches, or money. Uh -huh. So you mentioned, <clears throat> you know, the title of our show today is Confidently Creating Wealth. Yes. So, you know, uh, confidence and wealth, yeah. I feel go hand in hand, right? Because if you're less confident about anything, but I mean wealth, if you're less confident about wealth, then it may be a little less likely to achieve, mm -hmm. right? So we get stuck in that confidence. So share, just explore that a little bit more. I know you have some, I know you have some. Yeah, some juicy there. nuggets. Some juice, yeah, some juice yeah. nuggets. <laughs> some deliciousness around that. Yeah, so when we're, when we're feeling into the abundance that we have in our, in our lives or the wealth that we have in our lives, and if we want to think about a goal. So you, you mentioned before about goals, and I tend to 
teach a lot of people of reframing around resolutions with New Year's because we get into kind of those traps. Um, I like to set goals the night before a day and we can slide in easily and, and program our subconscious, which we can get into later if we have time. But when you're thinking about a goal that you want to achieve, whether it's within a day or a month or three months or a year, when we think about that goal, we want to be aligned with that goal. That means we want to feel good about that goal. We want to feel like we are confident in achieving it. And I teach muscle testing um, to a lot of people, my clients, my students, and again, anyone who will listen. I think it's one of the greatest tools we have at, at our disposal. And muscle testing, we can actually test our conscious, our subconscious, and our spiritual alignment or energetic alignment with a goal. And we want to feel confident about that goal. But what I would suggest right now, if we want to just play with that, if we have a goal right now that's monetary, if you have an amount that you want to bring in per month, say you, you are thinking about um, achieving a $5,000 month in your business, in your side hustle, in whatever you have going on in your life. If you think about that $5,000, you want to feel confident. You want to feel like that is yours, that belongs to you. You believe that you can achieve that. Now, what I suggest we all play with is doubling that goal, just for fun, just right now, and feel into how confident you feel about that amount. So, so for, yeah, I just want to like, I just want to like anchor this in. So for instance, um, say myself, if I feel confident, I'll just pick even like a low number. So if I feel confident about say like, uh, like $500 a week. Oh yeah. That's, that's pretty doable. Pretty confident. So your challenge is to get people to, to double that, right? Yes. Think about like a thousand a week yes. and think about the feeling and how does that feel in your body when you think yes. about like, Oh, <clears throat> is it like kind of scary or, or is it excited? Like you're like, Oh yeah, totally do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what's the point in getting a person to double that amount just to see how it feels and how to assess your confidence? Yes. It's also to trigger. So it's to trigger that stuck feeling. So we want to get a little bit uncomfortable. So when we get uncomfortable, then we can feel into our body where that uncomfort, that feeling, that pit, that tension, that restriction, we can feel where that is in our body. So does it give you a, a like a tightness in your head? Does it constrict your throat? Uh, does it feel tight across the chest? Do you feel kind of sick to your stomach? Do you feel like there's a pit in the bottom of your stomach? Or do you feel kind of a tightness at the, at the base of your spine, your hips? So, if anybody is an energy healer, you might recognize that I'm actually pinpointing chakra locations. And that is because our chakras, our energy kind of absorb, they don't kind of, they absorb and they become entangled with emotions. And these are learned patterns of behavior that we've picked up from uh, people around us or from just patterns that we've seen or taken on from other people. And we interpret those, especially around money and wealth and abundance, we interpret these to mean certain things. So maybe our family never made more than the thousand dollars a week or the 5,000 a month, maybe. So the fear of getting past that, the fear of, oh, I can't do that because then I'm not going to fit into my family. That fear will sit in our root chakra. That's what I call the shadow aspect of the chakra. If we feel guilty, we might feel a pit at the base of our stomach. If we feel shame, 
that will be in the higher stomach, right below the diaphragm. If we feel unworthy or even grief around making money, that will be in the heart chakra. So tightness in the chest. Hmm. If we feel uh, we might be criticized or if we have a history of past criticism from others or even ourselves as women, we do that. That will be in the throat area, the throat chakra. So headaches, a band across the head, even eye pain or ear pain, that will be the third eye or crown and tension or migraine headaches, sorry, is the crown, this is the third eye. And the tension headaches along the top, it's the crown chakra. So that is actually belittled spiritual or religious beliefs will sit up there. And so when we're going into maybe a spiritual business, a lot of these are tied together. And that's the, the trick is getting over those and it's testing into and it's shifting that energy. It's funny that you say water because I usually suggest to people to drink more water when we're doing this work because it's important to get, to get that lymph fluid in our body moving so that the energy moves more freely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's awesome. That's really interesting. <laughs> so that with the feeling that you that a person gets when you think of like say doubling your income when it comes to wealth, you really want to take notice of where you're feeling it yes. in the body. Yes. And it's so interesting because this is not my wheelhouse, the whole Reiki and chakras. I know about it, but it's not my expertise. But it's so interesting that each area is like a different feeling, right? Like it's like, I've heard like shame, guilt, um, you know, fear of criticism, fear of judgment, all those things. So it's really interesting that it can be pinpointed in the body. Yes. Yeah, it is. And that is important so that we can go in once we know where it is, then we can go in and we can observe it from a distance and we can offer space and we can ask, ask questions. What can I do to love you more? What can I do to offer you space? What can I do to make this more comfortable for you? And of course, in, in my coaching, uh, I actually combine about six different healing modalities so that we can go in and actually neutralize if it's a trauma, if it's a trigger, if there's emotional um, entanglement within that, then we can go in and we can actually dissolve or neutralize it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, you had mentioned muscle testing, but I'm kind of interested in, so let me just ask, so with the muscle test, testing, how, like, how is that going to help you know, any of our viewers or any of your clients to confidently create wealth. Okay. So what's that piece? The applied kinesiology or muscle testing allows us to tap into not just every aspect of our lives, but every aspect from the body, mind, spirit. So the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, or the energetic level. And we can tap in and see, we can actually test where we are lacking the confidence. So possibly we feel confident in creating a thousand dollars a week. But when we go to implement it, we self-sabotage or we, our mind goes blank. We, we knew that we wanted to say something in our copywriting, but then once we go to write it, we just kind of, everything empties out. So when we're muscle testing, we can muscle test the percentage of alignment with that monetary goal. And we can muscle test the body, mind, and spirit. So maybe your conscious mind is 100% on board. Yes, I'm confident that $1,000 a week is mine. No, no problem at all. But the subconscious has all of these programs like, uh, your mother said rich people are mean. You don't want to be a mean person, so you can't make $1,000 a week. Um, 
again, the family rule, right? You may be breaking the family rule or you might not fit in with your friends because you're making more money than they are or maybe they have uh, limiting beliefs or um, subconscious framing around money that you know of that you don't want to disturb in them. So you play small. Mm -hmm. So in muscle testing, we can tap in and see where those blocks are. We can feel them in, their, in our body, but then we can muscle test and tap into, because the subconscious is on that deeper level, we don't always know what's going on underneath the surface, right? If we think of the iceberg, the conscious, the body is the top that we see above the water. And then the subconscious and the energy level is, is the energy is all around, but the subconscious is un, underneath the water. So you don't see it. There's a lot going on underneath there. Mm -hmm. So applied kinesiology and muscle testing allows us to really go in and, and test and find out, find these answers to right. a lot of different questions. So what does a person do once they find out the answer? So for instance, if a person, you know, fears that if they become wealthy, they will say like lose their friends and family because they will, you know, just kind of be, you know, sort of separated from them. So yeah. how does a person, you know, find that out and move past that so they can confidently create wealth? Sometimes it's only the finding out that needs to happen. Sometimes we sabotage ourselves and there's a pattern that we kind of see happening, but we don't know what's, what's underneath the surface of why that's happening. So when we uncover why it's happening and we see, oh, I'm doing that because I don't want my friends to dislike me, sometimes that's all that's needed. And then we can really look at that and go, does that really matter? And is that really valid? Do I really think my friends won't like me anymore? And most of the time the answer is no. Most, you know, most of our friends are there to support us most of the time. And if they're not, then um, see you later, right? This is more our lives, our goals, our dreams it is more important than, than somebody who's not gonna support us. So most of the time, it is just uncovering that block. And then a weight has been lifted and you can move past that. Other times, we need to go in and we need to do some deeper work. So this is where the other healing modalities come in. So we could use neuro-linguistic programming to shift a belief or shift a trauma. We can use emotional freedom technique, which is beautiful at releasing those trapped emotions. Uh, we can use Reiki. Um, and we can, I use a lot of quantum healing, like quantum jumping and quantum timeline, which is uh, a great tool as well. And all of these together, or um, we can kind of actually muscle test to see which one is the best one to use per block. Uh, they, they work so seamlessly and easily and quickly that we can just go in and, and neutralize the block. Mm hmm. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is if a person is feeling some blockages or they feel like perhaps they're self-sabotaging their results and not really sure why or how or they want some clarity on to, you know, what is these patterns keep repeating? Yes. Then it's, you know, you know, seeking somebody like yourself to help them seek those answers. And once you have the awareness, then it is a choice to make different choices or to believe a different way. Yeah. yeah. And we can believe a different way with using mantras or affirmations. But again, we can implement muscle testing because when we're using affirmations, we want to be careful that the affirmations are things that, that bring up our confidence not deplete our confidence. So if we use an affirmation that is, I have $10 million in my bank account right now, but you don't, that's going to deplete your confidence, not raise it. So you can actually use muscle testing to see what affirmations you are more aligned with 
and uh, on again the mind body spirit levels so that you are raising your confidence every time you say it and that's what you want you want to empower yourself with the affirmations mm -hmm. that's awesome um, i'm just going to take a moment here to acknowledge a couple of comments so um leslie to tapped in like right at the beginning she was uh sharing that she likes to buy earrings as a reminder of places that she goes this is a lovely idea as well, Leslie. Thank you so much for tuning in. She also says, hi, Jill and Kelly from Trenton. Yeah. Yes, that's just a neighboring community to us, isn't it, Jill? It is. And, uh, and then we have Sanjaya. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. She says, oh no. Um, and I can't quite recall what uh, you were referring to, but I know she t tuned in, Jillian, when you were speaking there. So thank you guys so much for uh, you know uh, joining in and letting us know that you're here. Um, so when it comes to confidently creating wealth, like what what tips do you have for people that they can you know do today, tomorrow, whenever to confidently create wealth for themselves? Mm -hmm. So like we said before, with uh, tapping into the goals, what I would suggest is getting a piece of paper and writing down, um, creating a ladder and creating these rungs on the ladder. So you can create what I usually do is kind of a narrow sort of a um, kind of almost like an upside down pyramid. And I'm going to draw it. I'm going to draw it out. Awesome. So creating this ladder on a piece of paper and you have these rungs um, going you can make them the same or you can make them bigger and wider as they're going up. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom rung, you want to write down an income or an amount of money or wealth or abundance that you are 100% confident in creating, actualizing, or manifesting. So I like to tell people, perfect. Mm -hmm. I like to tell people, um, to start with a penny when we used to have pennies, that is. <laughs> Maybe let's go to Looney, a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so when you used to go for a walk and you're walking down the street and you knew that like you could look down and there'd be a penny on the street. How easy is it to find a penny on the street? Even now they're not in circulation anymore, but we still can find pennies on the street or a nickel or a, a quarter or um, you know a, we have dollar and two dollar coins here in Canada so when you're looking down and, and you can go out and find money on the road on the street so now again we're in Belleville Ontario we don't have a lot of snow here so even today I could go out and probably find if I took my dog for a walk, I could probably find some money somewhere on the street. Mm -hmm. So how confident are you in that? So you want to gauge that. So you want to pick a number that, um, or an amount that you're really confident that you can create. Um, I also want to open up, if anybody has any other questions about this, please do put them in the comments so that we can get to them. Mm -hmm. But then on the next rung, you want to maybe double that amount. So, or more so if you had a penny or if you had a dollar maybe put five dollars or put twenty dollars so you want to create this rung of go increasing amounts of money of wealth and at the top you want to have an amount that is something that you would like to attract into your life so maybe your monthly goal maybe a dream amount that you want to get to Maybe a dream amount that you think, oh, maybe next year I could get there. But we want to tap into that right now. So on that ladder, you're going to tap in to your, your body. Um, and I'll talk about muscle testing in a minute. But right now we can tap into your body and test, feel how that feels. How does it feel? Does it feel easy? Is there any constriction about finding a dollar on the street? Probably not. What about finding $20 on the street? To me, that still feels pretty light and easy. What about $100 on the street? Then I start to go, hmm, it's possible. 
uh, what about a thousand dollars? If I went and took my dog for a walk right now, how easy would it be for me to find one thousand dollars just out on the street somewhere? So I have a question. I have a question. So why is it you're saying to find it on the street as opposed to like say creating it in your business? Because I'm trying to link with the mind and the subconscious. Okay. When when we think of when we're using our conscious and subconscious mind and we think of finding a penny or a dollar on the street, we are actually manifesting it. We are, right? Okay. That's we're bringing that into our lives. Mm -hmm. We're creating it. We're actualizing it. Um, so that's, I'm linking the finding a dollar on the street to finding a thousand or 10,000 or a million dollars on the street, because I want that conscious mind to go, this is how I feel when I think about finding a dollar mm -hmm. versus this is how I feel when I think about finding $10,000. On the street. Okay. okay, so I just want to say this. I think I've watched too many movies. I'm thinking, okay, if I found a suitcase full of money and there was like a million bucks in there, I'd be like waiting for somebody to come chase me down. I wouldn't be feeling very confident about keeping that money. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another point because somewhere along the line, when you're working your way up these rungs of the ladder, somewhere in there, there's a little bit of a switch. And your mind goes, oh, I can't find that. Someone else has to give that to me. Some outside source has to give that to me. So that's one of the snags. That's one of the blocks that we have with money and wealth is we don't feel empowered or confident enough to create that ourselves. We feel like we have to have someone else give that to us. So you want to do two things with this ladder and the ladder can have um, four rungs or it can have 20. It's up to you. So this is the way that I just drawn mine out. Cause I started, I put a dollar at the bottom and then you said like yep. double it. So I put $2 and I'm thinking, Oh, if I want to get to the top, I need a little more, a few more rungs. <laughs> or you can just start going. Um, you could maybe change the $2 to 200 or 20. Mm hmm okay right. okay so you want to do two things you want to feel each rung how confident you are in creating that for yourself without any outside sources and the second thing is to feel where that that switches that flip and you want to feel where that is that you feel oh no 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 I need somebody outside of me to give that to me so Two things that we'll talk about. I want to give you guys an NLP exercise um, to shift that specifically. But the other thing I want to talk about first is the muscle testing. So we can muscle test with a partner first. What if if you haven't worked with me before? If you don't know applied kinesiology or you haven't worked with that before, I suggest working with a partner first just to test your baseline. And if you're physically able to, and that's not going to harm you, with a partner, you put one arm at shoulder height and you just, you hold your arm steady and try to resist your partner pushing down on your arm. It's not an arm wrestling competition, but you're just testing the resistance of your, the strength of your muscles, of your body. And so the first test is your partner is going to say resist. You will resist with your arm. Your partner will push down just to test. The second push or resistance, she'll, she or your, he, your partner will say, uh, tell me yes. You'll say yes. And your partner will push down on your arm to test your resistance. And the third test is your partner will say, tell me no. And you'll say no. And your partner will push down on your arm and your arm will go lower usually 9.8% of the time, your arm will go lower because your body can't lie. So if even if it's a no, um, your body will uh, weaken. So that is the premise of applied kinesiology or muscle testing. Now, 
the other way you can do it once you've done that I actually would like uh, a fourth test where your partner says to you you're at the energetic resonance of courage or above and you can say yes and then you can test so if you test wrong you are <coughs> weak you are not so this is important because this might be getting a little bit too deep for this this coffee chat we might need a second one for this but dr david hawkins created a map of consciousness he's tested this for many many decades He's written books on it. One is Power Versus Force. And he talks about created this map of consciousness where to be able to muscle test yourself accurately, you need to be at an energetic residence of 200 or above. So that's the little background story for why I suggest people uh, muscle test with a partner first. And then once you've done that, you can body test. So I actually test with a pendulum um, because I get more information from the pendulum but I also body test a lot as well so when I'm in the grocery store um, do I want to buy this soup or this soup and I'll ask my body so you can stand with your feet shoulder width apart and you can ask what is yes and allow your body to move most times your body will pull forward for yes and then you'll recenter and you'll say what is no and allow your body to move and most of the time your body will be pulled back for no so that is you can muscle test for anything checking like testing your body do you want this soup or do you want this soup right you can do this with am i a hundred percent aligned with um, manifesting or creating a thousand dollars a week or that was yeah that was the amount that we had said prior yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or am I 100% confident in creating a thousand dollars a week? Yeah, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I have experienced muscle testing, and it's amazing. I'm like trying to like hold my arm up, and I'm like, I, I can't. I yeah. cannot. And it's just, it's really amazing that when you know, you have the ability to really tune into your body. The answers are all there. Yeah. Right. The answers yeah. are all there. It's just, you know, quieting the mind for me anyway, it's been quieting the mind and really tuning in and checking into it to the way my body is feeling. Yes. It gives me, it definitely gives me the answers. It does. Um, and it is a beautiful tool that we can use for virtually anything. You don't need to go to a fortune teller anymore because you can just ask your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I like this ladder exercise that you were sharing. And, uh, you know, definitely I'm going to take some time later today when I have some quiet time. And, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, put your ladder test to the test. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the other component of that was when you, if there's a, if there's a ladder or a rung that you feel you need an outside person to give you that amount, like, like a thousand or ten thousand, whatever that amount amount is for somebody, you can actually use um, another tool, which is the NLP whiteboard or chalkboard. So you just visualize a chalkboard or a whiteboard out in front of you. And you start to put things on it that are easy for you to do. So on the right side of the whiteboard would be super easy things like I can tie my shoe really, really well, especially if it's Velcro. I'm like supersonic, right? That would be 100% on the right. That's easy, easy to do. But algebra is 100% on the left. That's not easy for me to do. So think about these income levels. How easy is it for you to actualize, find, bring into your life a thousand dollars? And you wanna put it on the scale of on this whiteboard. Is it somewhere in the middle? Is it zero on the left? Or is it maybe a hundred percent on the right? And then where that flip is that you feel like that amount has to come from someone else, 
you place it on the whiteboard and you go in because it's your whiteboard you can put your hand into the whiteboard and grab that amount of money that you feel needs to come from somewhere else and you move it over to the right and you line it up with something like tying your shoes something that's really easy for you and then again I like to use muscle testing because sometimes it, it's more a little bit more scientific so you can muscle test your percentage of alignment with creating a ten thousand dollars and then you can use this NLP tool and then you can muscle test again how aligned do you feel now and usually you're more aligned because this NLP whiteboard is actually um, reframing beliefs mm -hmm. in our brain in our mind hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. So in 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 my reality, in my life and what I do is how I'm relating to what you're saying to uh, what I do and how I proceed. For instance is if if I realize that maybe like a certain amount of money or like something is not very easy for me. Mm -hmm. Right? Then I identify what is not easy, and then I think of it as, okay, who do I need to be to make that easy? Or how can I learn that skill? Or what do I need to learn? What do I need to know? So right. for me, then it's going out and learning that skill so that making X amount of money is easier. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, there is, there's so many pieces to the puzzle, isn't there? Yeah. So what if we didn't have to go out and learn something new? What if we just felt like we could do it? That, yeah, it seems really easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. of course, I'm not saying think of yourself as a brain surgeon and then you can go out tomorrow and do your first frontal lobotomy, right? Not possible at all there are skills for certain things but when we're creating our own lives when we are dealing with confidence especially um, emotional trauma triggers shame guilt all of these shadow aspects that we were talking about before so when we're thinking about an income or wealth or confidence and confidence with anything in our lives and we feel into our body and feel where does that feel like it's stuck or resisting and we can actually um, shift it using that tool. So where would guilt be on this whiteboard? Or where would unworthiness be? Or where would your where would your confidence be? And then you can just you can use this whiteboard and um, and increase your confidence, increase your self worth. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and things like that are are multi layered. So we we don't um, often I say like it's like it's like you're standing in a pond and you're scraping off the surface so that more stuff can come to the surface, right? And then you can you can clear that. So it is it is a process, um, but we don't have to go and sit on a mountaintop and and meditate for. 10 years anymore we can do tools like this to get clear and, and to gain focus and gain clarity and, and gain confidence in our lives awesome well thank you so much for sharing with everybody about what you do and those uh interesting tips that you gave uh, i the, the latter one resonated with me the most. Yes. So I'm going to definitely do that one and just really tuning into your body and seeing where that sits. Yeah. You know, identifying it and then being able to move past it. So again, thanks so much for sharing. I would love to invite you to share with everybody how people can get in touch with you, Jillian. Yeah. Well, I do have a website. It's JillianSchlager.com. Um, I am mostly on Facebook, so I have a Facebook um, group, the Energetic Alignment Community, as well as my Facebook page, Jillian Schlager. And I do uh, have clarity calls. I have a three 
part call that's um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's called Ask, Create, Be. And these are the tools that we use to, to get to the, the, to gain clarity around our goals and what is resisting them. So yeah, anybody can reach out to me on Facebook or through my website. Excellent. And I'm going to welcome you to leave those links in the comments once we're done our call. So then it's easy access for anybody tuning in. Great. Yeah. Yay. If anybody has any questions, you can leave those in the comments as well. And I'd be happy to answer them. And mm -hmm. hopefully this has been helpful for everybody. And you use these tools and implement them into your life because they're super easy. They're super fun to do. Excellent. Yeah, so I welcome you to reach out to Jillian and, and send her a friend request. I know that she, I have seen many different videos on her page, which are really insightful and useful. So thanks you so much for being a guest, Jillian. Um, I want to share with you all that if you've enjoyed the Coffee and Confidence show today, it is a weekly show airing right here on Facebook Thursday mornings. So you can tune in live next week for my next special guest as we talk confidence. I also have a Facebook group that I manage here on Facebook. It's called the Coffee and Confidence Group. And I'm going to leave the link in the comments once we're done. And I would love to connect with you. So there you have it. Episode 27 has come to an end. So thanks again, Jillian. And everybody, we'll see you next week right here on episode 28 of the Coffee and Confidence Show. Bye for now, guys. Bye.